the Strategic Hot Box with Dr. Brandy Love Stankovic. Discussing leadership, business, and how to take control of your life and achieve greatness. From the streets of Las Vegas, energized, informed, and never diluted. It's time to kick some ass. Welcome back to the Strategic Hot Box. It's your girl, Dr. Brandy Stankovic. And today's episode, I know I say this a lot. I begin a lot of episodes and say, this is going to be my favorite ever. But this one might be one of my favorites ever. And that's because we're going to talk about rock music. Our title today is Leadership Lessons from Rock Legends. And I have a good friend of mine and musician here, Brian Lee, to join us. Let's get started. So as you know, we break down the podcast into the learn, the love, and the kick ass. And for those of you that have been with us for the last couple years, I'm sure you are living and breathing this learn, love, kick ass philosophy that we have. And it's really important to us and how we break down the podcast as well as how we break down the action and things that you can take forward. And so today in the learn, we're going to talk a little bit about music and my experiences with music. In love, we're going to bring in Brian Lee and he's going to talk about, this is a, a passionate topic for him and one that was spawned from a late night conversation that he and I had about how much a shared passion for rock and roll and what musicians really do and and what they bring out in people. And then in the kick-ass, of course, I'll give you some things that you can start implementing, what we're actually going to learn from these rock stars and implement starting today. In music or music in general and rock or in all types of genres of music, uh, music is definitely one of my favorite art forms and I incorporate it into everything that I do. And I love teaching my kids about music and other people are having those delicious banter conversations about particular bands or music. And I use music across the work that I do as well. So I might have a playlist that I, that I have for training or an engagement or something, a song that may inspire creativity and something that I'm working on on. And I'm also not afraid to have a spontaneous dance party (laughs) wherever we are. So whether I've been on the golf course with Brian and had dance parties or in the kitchen with my kids, I mean, it's just music really is, is, is integral to my life. And I know it is to many of yours that are listening today. One of the best things about music and musicians is going to live concerts. And I try to go to several throughout the year, but the when a musician is on stage and they're good and they're really getting into their music, they're living and breathing that, that song and that music, they're bleeding their melodies. And you really, from a, from an audience or a fan perspective, you get to see them in their rawest form. And there are so many moments when I've been at a concert with, you know, 30,000 of my, my best friends and that the musician will be playing a song that's really popular or one of their top hits and they'll turn the microphone over to the audience and the audience continues on and singing that song. And it's such a special moment. I've, I commonly find myself looking around going, whoa, there's so many people in this room right now that are here for the exact same reason. And that's for the love of the music and to love of the moment in life. And that's just so special that uh, music can bring that out in people and and that musicians are able to do that for years and years and years and years and, and over and over and over. So I want to share kind of a highlight of that kind of phenomenon that happened. I went down to Mexico City last year to see Metallica. Woo! And uh, Metallica is one of my favorite bands, as, as most of you probably know. And it, going to a concert in Metallica was a really special um, opportunity or special just experience because of the way the fans are and engage with the music as well. But check out this clip. Now, mind you, it's a, a cell phone video. So for those of you that are just listening to the podcast today, I urge you, you'll hear the music from the concert. But if you can, check out the video as well. But Scott, please play the Metallica. The bell tolls. That we're able to watch that. And for those that, that are just listening, I'll describe it a little. It's basically me filming, you know, For Whom the Bell Tolls, one of the best songs ever. And in the moment that I kind of spawn out and or, or you know, take the, the, the phone and, and look around the stadium that I was in at all the people that are there dancing and singing and playing air guitar in unison and just how much energy the music and songs bring. And I Googled before I uh, came in here because I just knew there was a ton, a ton of people there that day and probably the biggest concert I've ever been to. 
you. And when I Googled it there at Foro de Sol in Mexico City, there were 197,000 people, 745 to be exact. What? I mean, there were almost 200,000 people in that stadium dancing together, singing together. And it wasn't nearly as chaotic as, as you know, as some small concerts have been to that, that, that I've been a part of. But I admire bands like Metallica uh, that have been able to stay true to their values while exploring new creative outlets. So one of the things that, that we'll chat about today, and we're going to get uh, Brian in here shortly, is a um, what can we learn from these musicians to create that kind of passion with 200,000 people stand years and years later, 20 years after the band is created, to be you know throwing their fists in the air and be excited about the music and the passion for what they have? Um, one thing that Metallica does is uh, they have evolved, right? So in the early 90s, I'm sure some of you remember, they received a lot of negative attention for cutting their hair and and going, you know, quote unquote, air quote soft. And first of all, if you're a real Metallica, Metallica fan, then you should like Metallica no matter what. It's just a matter of the preference that you might have for different uh, different albums or, or or things like that. But that's that's my challenge for for those fellow Metallica fans out there. But also the really then the main thing a point that I wanted to make there is. They knew they needed to step up their game in order to get their reach to broaden. And so they got experts involved. And in their case, it was producers. And they were able to reach a wider audience through the Metallica Metallica album um, or Black. And they it, it just changed, I think, Metallica's journey. It changed their, their projection. It changed all of uh, our listeners' lives. And I was young in the 90s. I was young once, and it was in the 90s, um, but that's when Metallica came into my life. I didn't listen to Metallica through the 80s, although those have since become some of my favorite albums. So it's it's interesting how bands can use and evolve. So that's, that's the first thing. The second thing that I really find amazing and is a lesson for me is that some bands all over, all the time, will sing songs like it's the first time Every time. I recently saw the Rolling Stones, and as you may know, the Rolling Stones formed in 1962. So you know those boys have been singing those songs for a long time, and they have probably sang some of the top hits millions of times. And yet when I was there, the experience I had was that they were rocking out and that's what makes it really special is making it a new a new journey every single time. I was in a strategic planning session uh, just in the last couple of weeks, and we did back-to-back sessions. Day one was with a certain group. Day two was with another group. And there were a couple people that came to both. And because of that, a lot of the people that were speaking didn't say all the things that they said the day before. I like, didn't present all the facts in the same way. And one of the things I reminded them as I was facilitating kind of in the breaks was, hey, don't forget to present this like it's the first time because there are people in the room that are bright eyed and, you know, and and excited and hearing this information for the first time. And so as leaders, we have to be able to keep that in mind and be just as excited, no matter how many times we've delivered that message or been a part of that particular project that you're working on. The final thing that I wanted to talk about before we bring in Brian is to love and embrace groupies. Uh, I don't know if anybody on the listening today or watching today has seen Paul McCartney's uh, Carpool Karaoke. It's awesome. Be prepared to cry. If you're like me and you just cry at things, then then be prepared for that. But he just embraces his fans and has such admiration for his fans as they do him. And he really is a, a rock star you know, legend. And I, I think embracing your groupies and, and making sure that you're sharing in that love is really important. So we have lots of legends to, to learn from. I have another legend on my shirt today, John Fogarty with Creedence. And it's time to bring in our our guest, Brian Lee, who shares my passion uh, for music and rock. Now, Brian is a the CFO. So he, we were just chatting before the podcast. He is a, a CFO by day and a rock star by, by night. But he's the CFO at Landings Credit Union. He is a development educator. So shout out to our DE friends. He is a, has his bachelor's in science and accountancy. And he went to Arizona State University. He also is on several committees advocating for young professionals through CUNA and the Mountain West, and he was just named the Mountain West Crane Association Top 20 Under 40, so he's a pretty special, uh, amazing guy. In addition to all of that that kind of quote-unquote professional stuff, he also is doing a lot of musician and arts uh, and sharing as well. So he's a musician, he plays guitar, he plays the banjo, which I haven't heard him play, and now I want to, and he plays a little piano, he sings, he is uh, certainly a rock 
a rock music and rock star connoisseur. So let join me in welcoming Brian. Hey, Brian. Hey, Brandy. How you doing? Good. And I was almost thinking that, you know, loosening that, like having the tie around your head or like if I popped <laughs> it on and you had that around your head, I was going to, I was going to giggle. So thank you for joining us today. So tell us thank a you. little bit about your journey in, in leadership and music too. It, well, really, I, I when I was growing up, I wanted to be a rock star, but then I became an accountant. That's really <laughs> it. Yeah, long story short, um, you know, it's the classic tale, really. Um, so I loved music growing up, and and I loved playing. And um, one way I figured I could continue to do that was to you know have a good career behind me. Mm, and great. really, I love what I do. I got into accounting, and then when I got into credit unions, I just love love what I do. And as you mentioned, getting to work with young professionals, amazing network that I've been able to work with. It's kind of led me to where I am now and, and really trying to learn those lessons from playing music and Mm -hmm. and what I do every day. That's awesome. And you're right. Sometimes it takes a career to support, you know, an art. Art, uh, especially music are expensive hobbies. So who's your favorite band? I don't know if I know the answer to this question. (laughs) Well, I've got several favorites, but one that I think has really lasted since I was younger is is Pearl Jam. That was oh, uh, I pick. got into at a young age. I have five older brothers, so mm-hmm. at a pretty young age, I got into really the Seattle grunge, and so Pearl Jam was definitely one of my favorite uh, with Eddie Vedder there. So yes, oh my I, gosh. Um, when I was 14 years old, uh, I I talked my one of my older brothers into uh, taking me to a Pearl Jam concert, mm-hmm. and so this was when they were very popular after their third album and um it's back when you had to actually call on the phone to get tickets oh wow and so uh-huh. I was calling you know dialing hanging up got the busy tone get in there got in after about five minutes they sold out in 10 minutes on the phone oh wow and so I got to go with my brother when i was 14 and it was it was amazing i mean Eddie so Vedder was it the, that must the have stage. been the the vital uh vitology al- album then yep, right vitology okay. tour yeah Wow. So Eddie Vedder comes out on a lowrider bicycle on stage. Uh, the Ramones mm-hmm. actually opened for him. Ooh, it was just, amazing. it was an amazing experience. It, it was sure pretty was. funny about halfway through, actually, my brother uh, kind of left me to go up front in the mosh pits or something. And I was just kind of out there. hanging out, uh, huh. enjoying the show. But uh, yeah, I still remember how amazing that wow. was. Wow. And do you have a favorite, uh, in, in addition to a favorite band, a favorite front man for maybe another band? Although Eddie Vedder is right up there. Eddie Vedder's definitely up there. Uh, ben Harper is one of my favorite Ooh, artists. Uh, okay. I've seen him several times, and just seeing the emotion he puts into every show uh, has really inspired me as well. And I saw Eddie Vedder last year play, and uh, the messages that he had, in addition to just his music, I mean, his music is incredible, and in some points, it's just him sitting on a stump playing his guitar and it's, oh, I mean, I could just, you know, I like make love to the music, but he, <laughs> he's so, he's just so incredible and so talented, but he also just shares love with the audience as well. And he's very open-minded, very supportive of, of all types of people. And I, and I really dig that. That's what I love. I was just uh, listening to their Pearl Jam, you know, satellite radio channel, and they had a uh, live concert from Italy that was like two weeks ago. Oh, wow. And you just heard every time he was just gracious. You, mm-hmm. you kind of mentioned that's one of those big things with fans. They let you know that they're grateful you, you're showing up. They're mm-hmm. not, they never get too big where they don't show their fans that they're grateful that they're there. And that's certainly something that we can learn from legends along the way is to be, is to be grateful. Cause I, I know that I have been to concerts or pop concerts or different rock concerts that, uh, the musicians are, are less so. Right. Um, I, I went to a concert one time. They said, oh, yeah, we didn't really want to be here. We're just the tour stopped here. So we, we had to show up. Wow. Like, oh, thanks for coming. Yeah. <laughs> Woo. Um, so how do le- musical legends then you think stay relevant? I talked a little bit about evolution, but how do they stay relevant? Well, I think it's a good mix. And I really like what you talk about. It's a mix of consistency with uh, evolving with evolution, because as you mentioned, you know, James Hetfield cuts his hair, Mm -hmm. but if you show up to his concert and he's not playing any songs from the Black Album, then you're going to have an issue, right? Mm -hmm. You're going to say, well, okay, now you've completely changed. Um, But they're really staying true to their voice of what they've always done, but at the same time, uh, they don't want to be a one-hit wonder. So as they make more albums, as they play live, they have to maybe improvise a little bit, change things up, Mm -hmm. um, change their look, whatever it is. Uh, We always want to see something a little different. So you got to have that strong base of really consistency and delivering 
what you want, what the fans want, but also evolving so that it continues to grow. Yeah, no doubt. Because if you think about, especially bands like the Rolling Stones or bands like Metallica that have been around for a number of years, I'm certainly not the same person I was. And, you know, when I went to my first Metallica concert, thank goodness. Right. And, <laughs> and I would imagine you're not the same 14 year old that was there at Pearl Jam either. So, you, you right. know, you think about some of these things, like, of course, they're going to grow up in some ways and allowing them to be able to, to create new music with their new experiences is pretty cool, too. Right. And they I think they have to continue to bring that emotion into the songs. And like when I saw Eddie Better, he was jumping around on stage. I think he took about 10 minutes where he was beating the stage up with the microphone stand. I still remember that. <laughs> yeah. I doubt he does that anymore. I yeah, doubt he's crowd yeah. surfing as much as energy. he used to. Yeah. <laughs> but right, he's still bringing that emotion when he sings that song. He's still right. inspiring. He's still sticking that microphone out into the crowd and we know we're supposed to sing. So. Right. Yeah, absolutely. So how can people then start to incorporate some of these things that we've said into their day to day or how have you done that? Well, I think to me, it's it's finding my voice. I once I like to play music for my, my friends and family. Um, you know, I don't play out too much anymore, but I like to share music with my friends and family. And one time I had a friend that told me, hey, there I am. Yeah, we got a little video. It does shout out to show what, you know, you in action there. So where were you in this particular clip? So that's actually, uh, I was part of a Tempe leadership group and we had a fundraiser. And uh, so I got to play a little bit of music and then we had kind of one of our local leg legends, uh, Walt Richardson, that was playing and he had me jump up on stage with him. So. Oh, wow. So let's hear, let's listen to like five seconds of it really quick. Can oh, that's amazing. Look at you in action. And I know I've seen you do several things like that, whether it was with Miles, Bristow, or just different people to just, you know, use music as a way to just energize people, whether it's for fundraisers or just to be happy and and things like right. that. It's, it's just fun. It's it's enjoyable to me. It's it's my art outlet. I mean, I mm -hmm. yeah, do accounting all day, so I need something to kind of have that creative outlet, and mm -hmm. that's allowed me to do it. And so, as I was mentioning, I had a friend that uh, told me, you know, you I, I was playing a song, and, and they said, hey, that song sounds great, but you're singing it like that artist. And I was just doing uh, a cover song. Interesting. They said, you have a good voice. Use your voice. And I think that's something that actually hit me in, in both music, but in like leadership styles. And you know what? We can learn so many things from other people, whether it's in music or leadership, what we want to be. But it, ultimately, we have to use our voice and let that come out in anything we do. Yes. I love that. You, you have a good voice. Use it. That's, uh, that's a, just a really great takeaway um, for today. And can you share a funny story of your journey in uh, mu music? Yeah, so my, my grandpa is actually a jazz musician. He played, I think he had a saxophone in his hand since he was four years old. He wow. was playing professionally in high school, you know, I think either, earlier than that. And one of my highlights with my, my time as being a musician is when my uh, grandpa started talking to me as a musician mm -hmm. because he took it very seriously. I mean, he played his whole life. He just passed away at 97, but played wow. his entire life. And one day uh, he was at my house and just as he was leaving, he, he kind of leaned over to me and said, you know, all those times I left the house with my saxophone case, your grandma never asked me where I was going. Oh. And I don't know if that was like a musician to musician <laughs> tip or, you know, saying something about my grandma, how trusting was he, she was. Or but, giving uh, you the elbow of, you know, so if yeah, you ever need a little what? time off. <laughs> yeah, just take the guitar case and head out on your head way. On she out. won't ask any questions. So. <laughs> oh, that's cool. Um, that And I love that. Were there some bands or different kind of genres of music that he shared with you that, that influenced you? Yeah, definitely. In in high school, I played with the jazz band for a couple of years. And so really getting into that and having an appreciation of how how much time he spent to be that great of a musician. He played right. both saxophone and clarinet. Mm -hmm. uh, he played with some of the great big band artists back in the day mm -hmm. and continue to play. And so to be able to really speak on those terms of uh, really music theory, that sort of thing was definitely amazing to me. Pretty insane. And you think about that with any musician, it's easy to sit back and down and be like, mm, easy stuff, right? I could do that. Right. Anybody could do that. And at the end of the day, it, it really does take a special human to not only be able to, to create and write and, and build music, but then also be able to perform that music. It's almost like unique skill sets in a sense. 
Right. And that's that clip you played where I was playing with Walt Richardson. I just mm -hmm. jumped up on stage and we played for over an hour together. And people were like, oh, wow, do you guys play together? I said, no, I just met him. Wow. And there's a certain way when musicians can speak and you can listen and play off of one another. It's, it's really different than anything else I do. Yeah, just be able to jam and play together. And, and I still have friends that I've played with since I was seven, uh, you know, seventh grade. And we can just still pick up and play. And the same is true with um, in the leadership sense too, right? So you get into a boardroom, there are certain leaders that we come across that you can just jive with right away and just know the business, know how it rolls and you, they walk in and they're ready to play. And it unfortunately doesn't happen as much as it should. Right. And I think it, it takes a little bit of understanding, you know, what your role is in that band or in that group yeah, uh -huh. and understanding, you know, not everyone can solo at the same time. Yeah. So you go see a concert. If everyone takes a solo at the same time, it just sounds like garbage, but if everyone takes their turn, it works out. And so it's awesome. kind of the same thing in the boardroom, right? It, you yeah. take your turn, you know, when to sit back and when to speak up. Wow. All of these good uh, takeaways. So share one bold action item or takeaway for everybody. And you've already shared a couple. Do you have another? Uh, yeah, just kind of along the lines, you know, find your voice, develop it. Uh, it's, it's great to, you know, pick up things from other people, but don't try to just be that other person. You want to really use your voice and uh, bring your unique qualities into any role that you have, because that's really what's going to make a difference. Love it. Find your voice. Not everybody can solo at the same time. Embrace groupies. There's so many fun things that we've talked about. So if people wanted to get a hold of you, how would they do that? Uh, so you can reach me on LinkedIn. Look me up there. Uh, my email is blee at landingscu.org or also on Twitter at Brian Lee AZ. At Brian Liazzi. Awesome. Thank you very much, Brian. It was a nice to have you Thank here. You. I feel like this is one of those conversations that we could do an entire series of podcasts <laughs> about. We have many more conversations about, but thank you for being here today and, and launching yeah. into it with me. I appreciate it. Thank you, Brandy. Talk to you soon. Bye. All right. Bye. Let's head out to our shout out. Hey, it's Brandy. We're the Metallica Concert Raider. Rock out. Are you ready to rock your top five kick ass? Let's kick some asses to the top five. So there I was at the Metallica concert shouting out for you. That was a, that was down in Mexico City. You can see the number of people that are getting ready there on the floor and just the energy and liveliness of it. Clearly, there was a lot of energy and liveliness in me, too. Woo! Uh, but uh, uh, we're ready now for our top five kick-ass. So... This is always my favorite part, and I think that there were some additional things that came out of our discussions with Brian as well, but what can we learn from rock legends? The first is to live, breathe, and bleed your art. If you want to be a musician, or if you want to be a leader, if you want to be have whatever the art form is that you create, then you have to live it, and breathe it, and bleed it, and just give everything you got to it. That's what makes people special. You know, I don't care if it's on the sports field, or court, or if it's in you know the studio whether it's here or it's in a musician studio or anything like that you have got to give it all you got or the people on the other end of that are going to feel it nobody wants to hang out and listen to a, a half-assed concert right where somebody like brian says he shows up and somebody goes i don't really want to be here well that doesn't make anybody that's there that spent money to be there you know feel special same is true in leadership Number two is to know your audience. We, uh, I think this is really important to the people that you're reaching out to. This is really important from a musician's ship standpoint. One of the uh, examples of this is with the band Journey, as you know, another major uh, favorite of mine. And Journey, I, I would put out there that Journey is listened to in more dive bars today. It is it sang along at more jukeboxes today than when that song came out. And I think it was 1984 or something. And so if you think about that, quite that's quite the evolution. They've been through a number of lead singers. I've seen them you know, play with maybe three or four of them. But their newest, and, and he's been around for, for quite a while now, but their newest, first of all, Arnell has some pipes and he can really sing. But secondly, the way that they found him via YouTube is is incredible and it allowed this evolution of them but allowed them to stay relevant and know their new audience what was their audience going to be in the future if they can't uh, if people aren't singing in dive bars anymore that were in the 80s they aren't doing it in the 2010s how can they be relevant to this next this next generation 
Number three is don't be afraid to evolve. Don't be afraid to cut your hair. Don't be afraid to grow up. Don't be afraid to evolve. As long as the music and the and the leadership and all the things that you have going for you are evolving along with you. And that's an important piece as well, is that in our evolution as human beings, that all of these art forms play that role too. And it, this is especially hard for people that are in their late 20s, early 30s, as they're, you know, young adults, but 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 really getting to more adulting. And the, in those moments, you'll see a separation of the people that you've grown up with and people that are going after different things. And it's hard sometimes to let go of old behaviors, of old friends, of old relationships, and, and to keep, you know, keep the hair long or whatever, however the metaphor that we want to look at it. But it's really important to be able to say, don't be afraid to evolve beyond that, because there's going to be a day when you aren't going to be able to have the same conversation that you have with your buddies in high school, especially if your buddies have taken different life paths. And so I urge everyone listening, don't be afraid to evolve. Number four is to play, live, sing like it's the first time every time. So if you're on the operating table as a doctor, if you're in the office, if you're in the boardroom, wherever you are, make sure that you're giving it the energy as if it was the first time, just because the people that are receiving that deserve that. And you don't know what special situation it was for them to get to be able to work with you or any projects and things like that. Especially if you're reaching out to members, customers, all those customers are going to have a unique experience with you and or your products and services. And so give it to them like it's the first time every time. And number five is to embrace your groupies, uh, to love the people that, that love you. It's another way for me to say we got to share love. I really believe in it. But if there is somebody that really loves the things that you're doing, then why not share some love back with them? That we are never too cool for the people that help support the careers that we create, whether it's in leadership and again, and whether it's whatever path that you've taken in music and art and leadership and embrace the people that have supported you and been your fans along the way. There's your top five kick ass. So thank you again to Brian for being here. I feel like this is definitely one of those topics that we could go on and on and on about. And so if we want to dig it up again and you're out there and you're a musician that has a new flair on it, reach out to us. Or if there's another topic that you'd like us to tackle here at the Strategic Hot Box, let us know. You can hit us up on Twitter at Brandy Love, B-R-A-N-D-I-L-U-V, or Instagram at Strategic Hot Box or at Brandy Love. And you can also email podcast at strategichotbox.com. And if you want any ongoing access, so whether it's to get Brian's information, whether it's to find some leadership tools, maybe some really cool merchandise that we have. We've had a lot of, uh, of our rock star friends and, and hot box pioneers uh, share some love with the wearing some of the merchandise and then the shirts and things. Then head out to the strategichotbox.com and you can find all of that there. Until I see you again, Get out there, find your voice, embrace your voice, you know, embrace your groupies and kick some ass.